Oh? Sandra. Attorney in. Luck to you. Four hours, 52 minutes, and 20 seconds. Congratulations. I thought no one would break the five-hour barrier. Well, it's time we had a new puzzle. Time we had a new world. Keep your eyes peeled. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Something very interesting. It's coming in on every channel. Track it, Paul. See anything? No. But someone or something is trying to talk to us. Commander, it is coming from somewhere along coordinate line 397. Colonel, see what computer makes of it. Alan, do you have an Eagle crew on standby? Yes, sir. Whale and Costo, they're ready to go. All right, have them fly along 397 and see what they can see. Right. Whale and Costo, you're on Eagle 1. Move it. Sandra. Keep the scanners on the Eagle. Helena, monitor the life signs constantly. It's our only contact with them. Well, it's certainly eager to talk, but I'd sure like to know what Wayland has to say. It's not gonna let us get a word in edgeways. Well, let's uh, hope it has a pretty face. like a giant space an enemy. It's pulsating. I've never seen anything like it before. Come on, Colonel. The computer must be getting some information from Eagle One. They're getting a continuous relay of data from their onboard instruments, Commander. Well? There's no analysis yet, but we're still receiving. increasing. There are strange shapes forming all around us.
All transmission from onboard computer ceased. John, their life signs have disappeared. Commander. Go, Alan. Kelly, rescue Eagle to pad three. I'll meet you on board. Sandra, keep searching for them with long range scanner. Of course, it could just be a fault on Wayland's ship. Victor, they've stopped trying to talk to us, and one of our eagles has disappeared. I don't like it. What the hell was that? Meteorite. Activate screens. Activated. It's gone through. Meteorite strike, section six, red alert. Unfortunately, no casualties, just impact damage. What puzzles me is where it came from. And how it got through our defense screens. They're setting it up for analysis. I'll check it out. Good. Paul? Nothing so far, Commander. They've just disappeared. No radar trace, no radio signals. It's as if Wayland's Eagle vaporized. Commander, the meteorite. Computer estimates it must have come from between orbital references 350 and 400. Now, the last reported reference point for Eagle One was 397. It's possible, just possible, that Eagle One was hit by that meteorite. Alan, there's a possibility the meteor may have collided with Eagle One. Is there any sign of wreckage or anything else out there? Well, I can't tell for sure. My instruments are picking up a lot of electrical disturbance. All right, then let's check it out visually. Have Kelly take a spacewalk. Right. I'll be in technical. What do you suppose that is out there? Oh, I have no idea. And if I were you, I wouldn't wait around long enough to find out. Just look for Eagle One, OK? Sure. Hey, Kelly. Good luck. You bet. Depressurization complete, Cal. Right, Alan. Okay, Kelly. Go. Thank you. 
Well, John, it may not look like much, but it's very dense and it's very heavy. We had to turn the gravity control right down to get it in here at all. How dense? How heavy? The computer's finding out right now. Any surface marks on it? Any indication it may have hit Eagle One? Huh? It's possible. I've got some early findings on this stuff. It's a piece of the coating that I took from the surface of this meteorite. It's organic. Alive? Definitely. It's nothing we'd recognize, but... John. Here it is. Weight, 328 tons. Constituent elements, titanium, stainless steel, aluminium, glass, carbon fibers, plastics, nuclear fuel cells, and a small amount of human tissue. Human tissue? We found Eagle One. Lee, recall Carter immediately. But, sir, Kelly's out in space. Get him back immediately! That! Kelly, abort. We've been recalled. Kel, do you read me? Kel, are you receiving? Kelly, signal if I'm getting through to you. Main mission. Eagle 4 here. Receiving you, Eagle 4. Paul, check our communication line. I'm getting no response from Kelly. No fault registering, Alan. And Kelly's in trouble. I'm going out after him. Stop him. Alan, get away from that area. Right now. Commander? Just get away from there now. Commander, that's Kelly out there. You can't expect me to leave him. Patterns are fantastic for a man who's totally anaesthetized. Well, his brain activity is phenomenal, but his breathing is back to normal. His heart and lungs have adjusted to what's going on inside of his brain. The question is, what is going on inside it? Well, he's suffering this non-stop flow of impulses and ideas because that part of the cerebellum which controls his will is failing its function. My hope is to stimulate the cerebellum and restore balance. Now, if we don't achieve that, very soon, he'll simply burn himself up. Marita. Where is he? What has happened? Marita. They're going to parade. 
What's wrong, Commander? Look, Melita, your husband's okay. He's in good hands. His heart and lungs are fine. As soon as there's any news, we'll let you know. I know it's no good to say, don't worry, but try not to. How can I? Well, this isn't the best place, is it? Nurse, you take Melita to her quarters. Commander, I want to stay I here. I know you do, but you can't, Melita. Really. Go on, please. Thank you, Nurse. John. Mathematical formulae. That monitor only gives electronic indications of a patient's brain activity. Those are computer traces, Victor. They're certainly not Kelly's brain patterns. Kano, what's with the computer? I can't understand it, Commander. Just tell me. I've checked everything. Computer is transmitting data into Kelly's brain. Into his brain? Into him. And through him, it's being beamed towards orbital reference 397. 397? That's the point where Kelly was affected and Eagle One was crushed. Kano, shut down transmitters immediately and analyze all data that's already gone out. Victor, whoever was trying to talk to us before Eagle One was crushed is now using Kelly as a link to computer and is sending information out into space through Kelly. He's trying to communicate again, John. now receiving data. It's coming from the same area in space and reaching computer via Kelly's brain. Kano, let's shut them off. Close down receivers and analyze all incoming and outgoing data immediately. Whoever was trying to talk to us is now talking to computer. Maybe he couldn't get through to us. He needed Kelly as an interpreter. Yeah, but whatever it's doing, it might be reprogramming computer against us. Increase anesthesia, two points. Two points? He's still feeling pain. He could die of shock. I'm going to induce neuronic concussion. Must not touch my brain. No. Let him go. Follow him. Take security. Let me know where he goes, but don't try to restrain him. Go. Right. Helena, you all right? I'm all right. John, we can't just let him go. Victor, whatever this thing wants, it's using Kelly. So let's let Kelly lead us to it. Commander, Kelly's gone into the computer room. Good. Get Kano there, but don't go in until I arrive. Right, Commander. Violet will have to stun him as a last resort. What's he up to? He's reprogramming so fast I can't get into details. All right, you two come with me. Kelly?
Kelly. Kelly. Kelly, I want to talk to you. Who are you transmitting to? Who's talking to Alpha? Look, answer me, damn it! No! should be immediate. And he's building a resistance to it. Melita? 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 Uh, Kenny! Help me. Help me! My darling, I saw... I've got to do it. I've got... And they won't let me. What is it? Tell I've me. I've got to. You must make them understand. Make them understand. Whatever that is out there, it's crushed Eagle One, it's done something to Kelly, and through him taken over computer. By my calculations, we shall be at the spot where Eagle One disappeared in four to six hours which is exactly how long we have to take action. Right, so we're back to the old problem of how to drive this moon the way we want it to go. Only two practical schemes for that, shock waves and anti-gravity screens. Both of those are aimed to reduce gravitational pull from another planet. This is neither a sun, a star, or a planet we're dealing with. Well, from the data we've managed to process, computer has determined that the energy field has no mass. Sir, we can't change course. What next? Well, we know it's organic and intelligent. So if we load an eagle with nuclear charges and aim it at its center, we might just be able to weaken it a little. Enough to reduce its crushing effect and let us get through. Yeah. Well, I better get started on that right away, Commander. All right, Alan, do it. Helena, we've got to get all the information we can from Kelly. He's on life support system. Yes, I know. And Victor, I'd like you and Connor to try and find out exactly what it is computers transmitting. John, the point about Kelly's condition... Helena, I don't... we've got to try it. Charges are fused, checked, and ready to go. Good. The best calculation we can get without asking computer is that all onboard systems should be blown at 1845. Destruct mechanism set for 1845. By that time, the ship should be locked on target, and nothing will be able to divert it. Well, I feel a lot happier now we've done something.
Whatever's out there, it's going to get one hell of a headache when it starts to squeeze that little bundle. I still don't like the idea of a preemptive strike against an enemy I don't understand. They crushed Eagle One to a pulp, Commander. I don't see any reason to doubt they'll do the same to us, too, if they can. That's what it looks like. It's also what the pilot saw. Where did it come from? It's the same material we found encrusted onto Eagle One. It seems it's reverting back to its original form. It looks harmless enough. Looks, yes, but it's highly unstable. We don't know why, but uh, its chemical structure changes. It gains incredible weight and density. Are you saying this foam crushed Eagle One? In sufficient quantity, John, this foam, as you call it, could crush anything. What did he say to Melita? Uh, he was struggling to get something out. There was something he had to do. He asked her to make them understand. Them? Meaning us. We're not going to find out what he had to do unless he can tell us. Uh, he's weakening fast. It's an orthodox diagnosis now. Decline due to brain damage. Well, strange, isn't it? That decline began just as soon as the computer was shut down. And that's when the hyperactivity in his brain stopped. You mean he was dependent on computer? John, something interesting here. Kelly transmitted an astonishing amount of information in the short time he had. Of course, I'm only taking random samples, so chances are I'm on the wrong track. Or at least we're on some track. Go oh, ahead. A lot of the data is physical information about the moon itself. Wait. Density, dimensions, trajectory. It's got information about the gravitational pull, about every change of course we've made since we left the Earth's orbit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think it's trying to find out if we can change course now. Right. John, if we're going to save Kelly, I think our only chance is to restart computer. and leave Alpha wide open. Whatever that thing is, maybe, just maybe it's trying to help us. Help us to avoid a collision that'll destroy Alpha. We've got to find some way to make contact. Well, of course, contact's already been made through Kelly. That's it. Of course, through Kelly. Symbiosis. John, if you want me to link your mind to Kelly's so that you can read his thoughts, no. The results could be catastrophic. Helena, if our moon hits that force field, it'll be a catastrophe for all of us. How long before that remote control eagle detonates? One hour 35, Commander. Kano, restart computer. We don't have too much time. Symbiosis. I don't think you should be doing this, John. I know what I'm doing. I've experienced it myself during advanced psychoanalysis. That was under very different conditions. To link you and Kelly electronically at this Kelly's point... Kelly's mind is connected in some way to this thing. And we can't be absolutely sure that your mind won't be affected in the same way. We've got to do it, Victor. 
We'll be monitoring your physical signs. If there are any changes, we'll have to stop. All right, let's get on with it. <sighs> Connected here. Connected here. Are you all right, John? Yeah, I'm all right. I think it worked. I think it worked. Hurtling towards that brain is our moon. Now, the eagle was just a fragment, so the brain surrounded it with antibodies and rejected it. Is a million times bigger than that eagle. That's right. But the brain is a million times bigger than the moon. Make no mistake, John. It would crush us in the same way that it crushed Wayland's eagle. Commander, it is trying to help us. It's working with computer. We must go to main mission. Good Easter, Kelly. It's possible. What's possible? We can divert the moon away from the brain. Now the plan is to increase the moon's rate of spin by providing a series of forces at tangents to its axis. This will give the moon an eccentric rotation and cause it to curve away from the center of the brain. We have much time. The computer has plotted precisely the points at which the series of charges should be placed along the equatorial line. is trying to save us. Paul, if we're going to carry out that brain's instructions, we'll need every nuclear charge we've got. So turn that nuclear eagle around and bring it back to Alpha. Remote controlled eagle, now heading back for Alpha. Good. What's its position? Approximately halfway between the moon and the brain. Which means those charges will explode the moment it arrives back here. 
Paul, reprogram the onboard computer and cancel out the detonation instruction. Yes, sir. Now, we're going to have to act fast if we're going to avoid collision. Alan, I want every single man standing by. As soon as that ship lands on the moon's surface, take the charges and place them on the moon's surface as per the brain's instruction. Victor, oversee the entire operation. Sunward. on the onboard computer. What kind of trouble? Everything's gone dead. Which means it's locked on a course which will bring it down right in the center of moon base Alpha, where it will explode. An accident? Or is the brain intentionally going to destroy us? No, Victor, I don't think it is intentional. Paul, I want the fastest eagle we've got ready for immediate liftoff. Is there anything you can do? We've got to get him to intensive care. Time, Commander. Good luck. Three minutes to detonation. Locking complete. I'm going to defuse the nuclear charges now. Charges diffused. I'm trying to alter the course of the remote controlled Eagle so that it misses Alpha. I can't divert it! lost our nuclear charges. Alpha's now headed straight for that brain. There's nothing we can do. There is something, John. We could increase the atmospheric pressure inside Alpha. You mean to counteract the crushing forces? Would it work? It's a long shot, but it might give us a chance, yes. Okay, Victor. I buy it. Set it up. 
I already am. Only skeleton crews above ground, all pressure sensors linked and ready for testing. Readings, Colonel. Sections A, B, and C, pressure readings normal. Section D coming through now. D ready for testing. D checked and functional. Attention, all Alpha personnel. This is Commander John Koenig. We are about to enter the area of the space brain. And as a result, we are faced with a grave crisis. I want you all to know that we in main mission will do everything in our power to prevent the destruction of Alpha. Please remain calm. We cannot predict the final outcome. But with luck, and the measures we are taking, it is my belief that we will survive. Good luck to you all. John, if we increase pressure too quickly, people will be in trouble. Right. We'll do it gradually. Ball, raise pressure two points now and distribute pressure suits. All right. Internal pressure reading up two points in section B. Raise internal pressure four points, Paul. Attention. All surface sections closed down. Total evacuation. Emergency services only in one minute. Seal bulkheads in two minutes. All right, thank you. Services. Bulkheads. 
I'll catch you. John, we must have power. Damn it. Get out of there. Come on, keep it moving. Down to the shelters. Hurry up. Got much more time. Come on, hurry up. Keep it moving. Down to the shelters. Oh, get out of here. Come on. Have a Out, out. John, we can't leave Kelly. Victor, it's a burst of medical. Atmosphere pressure holding. As soon as I'm clear, I seal the bulkheads. There are still men coming from the generator section. Will we route them? Section D, anyone there? Come on! Come on! Get down there, go ahead! I deserted Kelly. I just keep thinking that maybe we could have saved him. Helena, you can't assume the responsibility for Kelly's death no more than we can assume the responsibility for the death of that cosmic intelligence. Now, yes, we've lost Kelly. 
Think of those other worlds out there that depended on that brain. Think what they've lost. If only we could have communicated.